Instincts Part 2. Um, I know we already talked about instincts in uh, one of the other videos, uh, but it, it's such a, uh, you know, it, it's something that I kind of want to drill home. And, and so I decided to do a, a second video on it. But, um, you know, it, at, at the end of the day, like you have to know, you have to know your why. You have to know why you do what you do. Um, you have to go with your inner convictions. Uh, sometimes when, when you're starting out in your entrepreneur journey, you're going to have like, you're going to have voices coming and ideas coming from so many different directions. And so you, and I, I do think that you're supposed to listen to other people because, you know, one of my favorite proverbs is in the multitude of counsel, there's wisdom. However, Everybody has their own path to walk. Everyone has their own journey. Everyone has their own process that's unique to, to them. And I, I truly believe that, like, you know, digging down deep and going with your inner convictions, like, that will really help you along the way. Uh, I remember when we first started, when I first started a company uh, with with CPG brands, when you're uh, manufacturing pretty much anything, really, food, clothes, you have two options. You could either be vertically, vertically integrated, which is we handle all of production in-house, or you can outsource manufacturing where you get a, a co-packer, so a third party. And every major, I would say 95%, I think almost everybody that I spoke to told us, go the co-packer route, you know? Because when you go the co-packer route, there were books uh, that I read. They're like, you know, the co-packer route, you're investing in the, um, it allows you, it frees you up as the founder and your internal team to focus on building the brand versus running a factory. And that is a solid point. Like there's, there's absolute truth to it. Um, but again, that's, that's why I'm saying like, you have to kind of know why you're doing what you're doing. And so when we, when, when we first started, yeah, I was making the product by hand. Uh, and then as we were starting to grow and pick up traction, we realized, okay, we're going to need to either get machinery or use a co-packer. And so I did do one round with a co-packer. And the, the, that first round, that first order went pretty smooth. But as I'm in the co-packers facility, I'm walking around, I'm looking around things and I'm like, I can, cause my background's culinary. And so I'm like, naturally I can do this. Like I can, I can get some equipment. I, I don't know how I'm going to afford it, but you know, we'll, we'll just make it by hand until we, we figure that piece out. And at that point, even though like my mentors at the time, they're like, you're going to, you know, you, you, you know, the co-packers have x-ray machines, they have, you know, they have the people, you know, they have the insurance and all this, this, that, the third. And I'm like, but none of that really phased me. I just felt like I was supposed to step out and, and build our own plant. I'm like, I want to, you know, have my own team that I get to call family, et cetera, et cetera, regardless of the struggles that come with it. So that's what I decided to do. We, uh, we opened up our own plant. We started little by little, moving forward, moving forward, um, building one step at a time. And we ended up, and, 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 and to this day, like, and I don't know what the, five, what the next five years or the next 10 years are going to hold. But as, as of now, like, I think that's probably one of the best decisions that we made. One of the things that happened, one thing that I realized later, just hearing stories from other people is when, because co-packers, what they're doing is they're making product for hundreds of other companies. And so when you're a small guy starting out and you place an order, do you think they're paying attention to the order that's $100,000 or the orders that are two, three, four million dollars? And it, it, it's, it becomes this political game. I didn't know that at the time, but as I'm hearing stories from peers in the industry that are working with co-packers, it kind of proves my point. COVID-19 hits, you know, uh, a couple, couple years ago. And what did that do to the supply chain industry? Everybody, co-packers were, were stressed. 
co-packers had more business than they could actually handle. And so it, that's why, you know, and I don't know if you guys are doing shopping or your families, but that's why you would go to the stores and there was nothing on the shelves because p- people couldn't produce quick enough. Because we were able to handle our own production, we never had any shortages. We never had any out of stocks. We, it, we struggled to get a couple of ingredients here and there, but we were in charge. We were in control of the full production process, which was my inner conviction when I made the decision to uh, double down on self-manufacturing. And so this whole thing wasn't about, A, me being right, because there's a lot of challenges that I deal with where I'm like, ugh, like I hate fixing things. <laughs> and this guy right here that's the, cook, the, the culinary guy, I'm now fixing equipment something that I, I hate with a passion, but it, it's for a greater good. And so this is more so me saying, hey, I had the, I could have listened to what folks were saying, but I, there was just something about that inner conviction. There was something about that, that prompting and I went with it. And so far it's, um, it's doing good. So again, um, go with your gut. You know, a lot of times it'll uh, steer you in the right place.